Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about the James Webb Telescope. As anyone can tell, if they've been a fan or have been listening to my podcast, I separate a lot of my stuff into playlists, and one of them is the sciences. This is where this is going to fit. I am a big fan of science, all things science. That's my uh, spirituality, if you want to call it something. It gives me wonder and awe, and I'm just such a big fan. I try to bring something out to the, I mean, other places do it much better, but it's just my give and take on things, my two cents about what's going on, is I am fascinated. So much of these um, new breakthroughs we have just amaze me. And this is, I guess, like the successor to the Hubble telescope, or maybe it has different purposes in a more scientific way. But when I look at it, I just see such stunning images. Just fascinates me, gives me goosebumps, and makes me feel like a kid again, wondering about the universe itself. Now, I'm going to read from some, you know what, maybe I'll just put a couple of links in the description about the web telescope because on the site itself it has a bunch of little links and you can download your own pdfs and stuff so i'm going to read word for word some article stuff and maybe interject a little you know my thoughts here and there and that uh that should be how it goes this today maybe a little short today we'll see all right we're talking about the james webb telescope this website is from nasa i believe nasa.gov and I'll start with the web story, unfolding our cosmic history. Where do we come from? The greatest origin story of all unfolds with the James Webb Telescope. Webb is NASA's newest premier space science observatory, destined to be a household name like its predecessor, Hubble. This is an Apollo moment for NASA science. Webb will fundamentally alter our understanding of the universe. It can observe all the cosmos, from planets to stars, to nebulae, to galaxies, and beyond, helping scientists uncover secrets of the distant universe as well as exoplanets closer to home. Webb can explore our own solar system's residents with exquisite new detail and search for faint signals from the first galaxies ever made. From new forming stars to devouring black holes, Webb will reveal all this and more. I'm already just jazzed. Webb is engineered to build upon the groundbreaking discoveries of other spacecraft, such as the Hubble Space Telescope and the Spitzer Space Telescope. While Hubble views the universe in visible and ultraviolet light, Webb focuses on infrared a wavelength important for peering through gas and dust to see distant objects. After Splitzer blazed trails in the infrared, Webb will take us further by virtue of a primary mirror that is nearly 60 times larger in area. Finally, Webb's mirror gives us Hubble, uh, Hubble's incredible resolution with even greater sense of sensitivity, and it is fully adjustable in space. Wow. There's um such a leap there. I mean, I guess you wouldn't notice it, what I mean, but the Hubble telescope, the Splitzer telescope, I mean, we've been getting some great data over the years. And there was one minor mishap where someone, uh, I think the guy who wrote, like, the, I uh, had to lose the Nobel Prize, you know, because they came out and said they detected something and didn't. Anyway, this is just revolutionary in a way i know it might not seem like it's a better camera type thing but we'll see i'll continue webb's large mirror and advanced suite of instruments are protected by a five layer sun shield built to unfurl until it reaches the size of a tennis court the entire observatory is folded up to fit inside the launch vehicle and will unfold in space this complex deployment sequence has never been attempted for a space telescope, and the amazing engineering that enabled Webb includes many innovations that push the boundaries of technology. Webb is a feat of human ingenuity, 
The mission has been developed over two decades, with contributions from thousands of scientists, engineers, and other professionals from more than 14 countries and 29 U.S. states. Web launch, Web's launch is a pivotal moment that exemplifies the dedication, innovation, and ambition behind NASA and its partners, the European Space Agency, ESA, and Canadian Space Agency, CSA. But, is, but it is the only beginning. Blah, 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 blah. But it is only the beginning. The observatory's six months of commissioning in space is an exciting but harrowing time, during which thousands of parts and sequences will have to work together correctly almost a million miles from Earth. This period culminates when the telescope begins to take data, a truly momentous celebration for the mission, NASA, the United States, and the world. Fundamental astronomy questions propelled Webb's unique design, cutting-edge capabilities, and unparalleled infrared sensitivity, all geared to provide a new view of the universe and capture our imagination with extraordinary science discoveries. It's a giant leap forward in our quest to understand humanity's place in the great cosmic expanse. Wow, there's some great pictures. And this was a publicity thing. It went to um, the president, I believe. He had one of the staff meeting type things where they, you know, this is just amazing. Some of the pictures are beautiful. Now, from being back in the day with uh, Flat Earth guys, not that I was with them, but part of the debate against them, actually, there is a twisting of knowledge or information that they try to use. So this isn't a camera like you have at your house. So when you see pictures, these pictures are put together with the data, right? So it's not like you're taking a picture, your pops out, you're waving around the Polaroids. And you'll see, no, this takes data and infrared, and then they, they put it together as a picture that we would see and understand. There's raw data, too, type things you could look at, but it's not always not a real photo type, uh, type thing. But in any way, this is such a breakthrough. Watching this stuff online, it's just breathtaking. It really invigorates me just seeing it on this level. I just wish it wasn't at this time where... The government's using it as a distraction from all the garbage shit that's going around. You know, it's like the fucking circus. I'll put this up and it keeps me interested. But where the fuck is Medicare for all? We got gun laws, bullshit. We got prayer in school and fucking uh, robot. Like, there are more important things. I get it. But these are the things that ignite hope and wonder in me. And it's just insane. I, I just love it. I'm going to do... Let me talk about a couple of little data on it. So, the Webb te Space Telescope. Um, uh, da, 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 okay. Webb will directly observe a part of space and time never seen before. Webb will gaze into the epoch when the very first stars and galaxies formed over 13.5 billion years ago. Ultraviolet and visible light emitted but the very first luminous objects has been stretched or red shifted by the universe's continual expansion and arrives today as infrared light. Webb is designed to see this infrared light with unprecedented resolution and sensitivity. Exploring distant worlds and the solar system. Webb will be also a powerful tool for studying the nearby universe. Scientists will use Webb to study planets and other bodies in our solar system to determine their origin and evolution and compare them with exoplanets, planets that orbit other stars. Webb will also observe exoplanets located in their star's habitable zones, the regions where a planet could harbor liquid water on its surface, and can determine if and where signatures of habitability may be present using a technique called transmission spectro spectroscopy. Hmm. The observatory will examine starlight filtered through planetary atmospheres to learn about their chemical 
compositions. Now, I think it's the first time I flubbed in a while, and I forgot how fun it was, like, going through some of these things. I am notorious for, you know, messing these things up. Oh, boy. All right. Again, some of the designs are incredible. There are pictures here. The observatory. Webb is NASA's largest and most powerful space science telescope ever constructed. Webb's enormous size and frigid operating temperatures present extraordinary engineering challenges. After launching from French Guiana, the observatory will travel to an orbit about 1 million miles away from Earth and undergo six months of commissioning in space, unfolding its mirrors, sun shield, and other smaller systems, cooling down, aligning, and calibrating. Astronomers worldwide will then be able to conduct scientific observations to broaden our understanding of the universe. Webb will also complete the science achieved by other NASA missions. Partners are uh, Webb is an international collaboration between NASA and its partners, ESA, I mentioned that before, uh, 300 universities, organizations, and 29 U.S. states, 14 countries, which is just amazing. Um, Primary mirror size, 21.3 feet, 6.5 meters across. Mirror, the mirror is comprised of 18 gold-plated hexagonal deployable segments. Webb's five-layer deployable sun shield, it's the size of a tennis court. Let's see. Webb has four science instruments, near-infrared camera, near-infrared spectrograph, uh, mid infrared instrument MRI with near infrared imager and stillness spectrograph with the fine guidance sensor. Jeez. Visible near infrared, mid infrared, uh, 0 to 6, 23.5 micrometers. Uh, travel distance will be 1 million miles, 1.5 million kilometers from Earth. Orbiting the sun around the second Lagrange point. The Lagrange points are, uh, you know, uh, you can study them or look them up. They're like uh, little pockets of where the, if I'm right, the gravity doesn't pull as much and leaves you a good area. Hmm. Oh, man. Again, this is so much fun. I uh, just wish it was in better times where it's more like this is this is just on top of everything that's going great. You know, there's um like I said, lots of troubles going on in the world and I feel almost um weird about doing something like I should be out there marching, stamping my feet, screaming. So there's this feeling like, you know, oh, right, I'm going to do what I do. These are the things that just make me wonder. I get so much excitement out of it. It's just, um, there's too much to hold back and pretend. But there is lots of things going on. I, I get it. I understand it. I, um, uh, you know, it's just weird. I wish there was more of a hoopla with these things, too, because I think this is just fascinating, amazing. Um, just a whole bunch of uh, goodness in here. And just, like I said, it's just weird that a part of me wants to smile, go back, uh, immerse myself in this feeling of, um, you know, wonder. And this is just a bad time, I guess. It's not only, you know, work-wise with me and things going on, but it's, you know, friends, family, all you get type thing. You lose people, and there's just bad politics going on and the circus moving around. But, you know, I guess I'm hopeful that science doesn't stop. Good science doesn't stop. Right? There's, um... You know, I, I just, I do understand some of the things about um, it being, uh, you know, it's just, I don't, 
to be honest, I get so wrapped up and excited about it. And then when I start talking about the things like, you know, uh, gun laws and the rovers weight overturning and stuff, I, I really feel it. And it, it's impacting even this podcast, which is bullshit. Because I'm going to highlight some of humanity's greatness, you know, just to just want everybody to be so into science to get into it and let it carry you away, your thoughts and dreams. For me, it's not religion. It's, uh, you know, science. It's exploration, information, the unknown, gaining knowledge and what this wonderful world we live in, in some sense. You know, what's that comedian or some, I don't know, philosopher or whatever? He's like, we're on a spaceship called Earth, right? Formed like we are, and we're traveling through space. That alone is just mind boggling. You know, we're not on some stationary thing in orbit of space, you know, and no. So many things had to go right where we are positioned and we're moving. When the dinosaurs are around, we were on the other side of the galaxy. I mean, this is just mind-boggling stuff. And something like the James Webb Telescope is beautiful. It's fascinating. It is another tool we're going to use for humanity just to see and understand our place in the world. And it might not be, oh, we found God, right? Because you know we're not finding God on one of these pictures, like just chilling out. But what is God in its term, right? For some people, maybe it is a being in a cloud in some heavenly place, in some throne. Some genocidal fucking monster. But, for some people, what if it is the nebula? Maybe they believe in first cause, like there was a god and he just gave himself to make a universe. That's the big bang, all that stuff. There's just so much to love. And for me, even religious people have to deal with science and reality. And I hope they're enjoying all this too. And when I say religious, I don't really mean the guy who just believes in something. I mean, you know, rabbis and priest and all the other bullshit but this is a fascinating for me i just so love it so much i wish i could you know talk about it and land with people you know i was thinking about this when i did my podcast for twin peaks um i don't know maybe not the original because i did a podcast on queen of hearts uh, fan film and you know one of the things is when you sit down and you watch a show with somebody and a friend and they get into it, it becomes like a moment. It becomes a thing you remember and whatever. I couldn't do that with Twin Peaks, uh, The Return, Season 3. I, I just couldn't get people connected to it. I think there's a problem with science, too, that there's a, this anti-science movement, anti-intellectual movement. You don't know it's real, uh, space. There are people who still think we don't go to space, space isn't real, or it's flat, it's 6,000 years old. And I, I, it's like my, one of my other podcasts on this political stuff. I believe that there's hope. There's a, a light shining at the end of the tunnel. We're going to progress. We're going to make it. I'm an optimist or whatever. And these are the tools we're going to use. Some of these images are just breathtaking, beautiful. There's just so much to learn. The things we don't know. Of course, we don't know them. But we have evidence that points to things. Right? There's... um. You know, there's not just this thing that says, oh, it could be possible there's a god out there, but where's the evidence pointing to? No, it's not. I mean, yeah, you still have these, um, you know, these debates and stuff. I don't think they're worth it anymore because they don't mean anything. There's never been a, you know, a religious person that works, but you got to give some credit. There was some uh, major church divisions and stuff that really looked into putting money into science and helped the fun science, they might even be, uh, you know, the originators of science in the general sense, or maybe even people know more than me about history, and I'm just on the tip of being right about it being more than just that, and good, like I said, in some other ones, there could be a reason religion was here, and it served its purpose, I just believe it's not worth it no more, but in, in any sense, we're talking about science, we're talking about real, observable, testable science, added to you know the theoretical stuff because i think there's value in everything because for me all the little facts that led you towards this i bring you a hypothesis or a theory are evidence themselves there might not be more 
and way more than some other things. And to me, the balance would be different. But the James Webb Space Telescope will fill us in on certain things. You know, what is dark energy? Is it even dark energy? Is it a type of just gravity that formed at a certain time in the universe that, you know, gave us the quick expansion to faster expansion? Like, we, we want to know these answers. And if one day they spot God on some planet chilling out, you know, that'd be fine. Um, this is like a 25-year achievement when you think about it. Um, you know, just everybody working together. I talk about this with movies, too. I'm like, Jesus, you know, a movie was made. You know, many parts go into that. Um, you know, not just a director and an actor and done. I mean, that could happen with your fan films to an extent and shit you make around your house. But it's like a blockbuster movie. You look at the fucking credits and how many people are involved in it's just magic to me in a way, and this is the ultimate magic. It's unveiling the secrets of our universe, and holy shit, we are just um, trying to grow plants on the moon. We're thinking about going to Mars, and to be honest, there is a part of me that does understand, like, look, we should be taking keep, keep care of people at home. But also, I believe we should be doing this too. I don't believe in this nonsense that we can't have Medicare for all, blah, blah, blah. When other countries do it, and yes, they're not us. But we should be doing everything. One of the richest nations in the world. We should be at the forefront of this space exploration, because you know, in my there's some kind of fucking hoo ha going on about mining in space, because that'll be the next thing if it follows suit with us being just human assholes who aren't there yet. You know, evolution or whatever fuck you want to call it. Our society. There's gonna be some you know, mining, there's like one, I think I did a uh, podcast on it, there's one asteroid, one, that would make every human on Earth a billionaire six times. That's just insane. Oh, man. But I am transfixed on these images on Twitter, online. It's just beautiful. The beauty, the awe it inspires in me. And this is just the beginning with this. We are improving. We're seeing this. I hope in my lifetime there's some secrets that we can unlock. I always have a smile on my face when I watch these things. And I would be lying if it wasn't colored by the fact that I'm probably in a shitty place right now in life. And all the political stuff, it just doesn't help. So you find yourself, you know, poo-pooing these type of things. Like roll my eyes and get aggravated at first. Like, I'm enjoying something like this that took money from our country and other countries and where it could be better spent. But then, no, I'm not going to let that deter me. I want to make sure everybody, children, well, I curse in these things, but get your children into it. Get them telescopes. Get them into this beautiful time where we have a new tool out there, the James Webb Telescope, giving us amazing clarity. It's new technology, how it's using the predecessors' failures and strong points and incorporating it into everything. I mean, a tennis-sized thing. Like, just, it all boggles my mind that this thing unfolds in space. You know, then they get to go ahead. All the tools are working. um, Their observations are going to work. I mean, that's just, wow, right? I mean, you set this thing in space, it could just blow up before it gets to space, right? But then it's got to get to space and get through atmosphere, right? And then it's got to travel to a certain point, like 2 million miles away, whatever it is. But that's not enough. It's got to now unfurl itself, unfold itself, and it's all got to work. So to me, this is just awesome, fascinating. Congratulations to the people involved, us as a nation, us as humanity, a world. The beauty and wonder that's out there. I wish it would infect everybody and get them passionate about the sciences, really look at what's going on, and I understand there's real-life things, and we've got divisions in politics, but deep down, I think we're all just humans. We're all on this spacecraft called Earth, and I hope and I believe eventually we will overcome these shortcomings we have. I mean, it'd be nice if we had some solid gun laws or some revitalization looking into our you know, economy and helping home, like, 
to me, I understand this because it just it bothers me. I'm being honest, even now doing this podcast, there's this low in here where I was I'm fighting with myself because we live in a world where there's people homeless and starving, which is bullshit. It should not be possible in this day and age, but it is. What is is, but if it's you know checking out Jupiter's great red spot, um. What's under the ice of Europa, you know, atmosphere of Saturn. These things fascinate me, and I am so, so into them. Just getting to the bottom of these mysteries of life, of the universe. And I implore everybody to look into this, watch the podcast they do. I'm going to put the link for the website in the description. You can have your own journey about what these things, um, you know, check out. And, you know, they're out there with micrometeoroid. Like a meteoroid, right? This is damage they can do the size of a speck is just amazing. Like so many things are going on, building off the past, hoping, you know, that this works out. The whole thing. I mean, I'd be there cheering too in these offices when they're jumping up and down, so happy that they, you know, got this thing to work. So kudos to everybody. Uh, science lovers rejoice. There's just a beautiful tool out there that we could all benefit from in a way let's unlock the secrets let's spread the word um science is in science is cool science is you know really the best way to distinguish reality that we live in so i hope everybody's doing well hope everybody gets the wonder filled in them like it does to me i wish it affects everybody the same take care of your families my love to everybody Later.